the coloring stage is broken down into probably three basic parts. The first one is flatting. Flatting is basically treating your page like it's a coloring book. You have your blank page, it's black and white right now, but you're gonna need to put color on it somehow. The easiest way to do this is to go ahead and put flat color down on everything so that you have your selections made. If you wanna change a color, if you wanna select it for an effect, whatever you wanna do, your flats are gonna be your basic foundation for your colors. So to flat, first get rid of your thumbnail layer. Either delete it or turn it off or whatever you need to do, but make sure it's out of the way. Then create a layer underneath your ink lines. This is usually the time when I combine my two ink layers because we're not gonna be changing the inks anymore, so I don't have to worry about accidentally erasing something I don't want to. Select the layer that's underneath your ink lines and go to your paint bucket tool and make sure that it's set to refer other layer so that it will reference your ink lines. And then pick the colors you want to get started. And flatting is pretty much just the process of using this paint bucket and maybe your brush on occasion to fill in the flat colors here. Nothing special, nothing exciting yet. Just want to make sure we have all these selections properly made so that when we move on to the other steps, it'll be an easier time for everything. I usually like to start by doing one character all the way to completion in every panel, and then do another character all the way to completion in every panel, and then I'll usually go in and start filling in the background elements like sky, buildings, ground, whatever. Now that you're done with your flats, it's time to move on to something a little bit more exciting. Let's go ahead and start shading our page and start bringing these characters to life. Create a layer for your shadow color. This is gonna be pretty much the same process that we used in the character design video, so some of the stuff should look a little bit familiar. Basically, you're gonna to wanna to go in and pick a shadow color, whatever you like. Since they're outside in the middle of a sunny day, I'm gonna pick kind of a gray, brown, orangish color, and then you're gonna to want to fill that layer. All right, again, here it is, it's covering everything. We're gonna to wanna to fix that up. First, we're gonna hit multiply, so that we can see the rest of our colors under it. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a layer mask on top. Fill that layer mask on this side here with transparency. Now we have our shadow colors hidden so we can go back in and add them wherever we like. Working in this part of the layer mask, go ahead and select a color that's not the transparent color and then start shading with whatever brush you like and adding some depth and dimension to your piece. And while you're working, Remember to keep in mind the light source of your setting, whatever it is, here they're out in the middle of the day, it's hot overhead sun, so we're going to shade that accordingly. Pinning down your lighting source from the very beginning will help keep your page looking consistent and it'll be a big help to you in deciding where to place those shadows. Again, if you make a line that you don't like or you go over a little bit, no big deal, just hit the C key, it'll turn your transparency back on and you can get rid of the mistake that you've just created so you can try again. This is looking pretty good. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is obviously complete this process for every single panel on the page until it's been shaded to your liking. But because of time, I've gone ahead and completed this whole page already, and I have an example right here. So now we're in the home stretch of the coloring process. If you wanted to, you could just leave your page like this, but it's still not very exciting. So why don't we go ahead and add some special extras that are really gonna make your artwork pop. Now that you've finished shading, it's time to evaluate your page. What else does it need? A lot of basic manga and anime style just sticks with cell shading and doesn't have a whole lot of extra stuff. But I like to go in and add a few little touches here and there that I think bring extra life to the characters and extra fun to the page. For example, you can add a highlights layer and pop out some highlights in hair, on eyes, things that are shiny, metal bits, even highlight areas of grass or ground if you want to focus the viewer's eye a little bit more on something specific that's happening in a panel. You can also add in things like blush, gradients, magic, lights, all sorts of cool effects. You know, really working digitally, the sky is the limit and you can decide how little or how much you want to do. I like to start with some highlights especially on hair. So let's go ahead and add some highlights to this character right here in this panel. Now what you're going to want to do is create a new layer for your highlights. If it helps you out to remember what's going on, because we're starting to collect a lot of layers on this file, you can label it highlights. Sometimes that helps me, just so I'm, when I'm flipping back and forth, if I want to get to a specific layer, I know exactly where I'm going. So here's our highlights layer. When I put highlights in hair, I 
don't tend to like to make it, especially if it's dark hair, too bright of a highlight. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the opacity of this layer to about 45. And then I'm gonna take white and the brush of my choice and go in and add some highlights to her hair. Okay, that looks pretty nice, but it's hair, right? You wanna kind of make it look a little bit more like a highlight is hitting hair. I like to go in with my transparency brush afterwards and add a couple of little details to the highlights, break up the line just a little bit with varying line weights to kind of make it look a little bit more like there's light reflecting off of her hair. You can also add highlights to skin. I would do this on a separate layer, so create another layer and use your same white brush and maybe go in and give them like a little bit of shine on their nose. She's got such a big nose, why not? Let's call a little bit of attention to it. Maybe some cheek sparkles, she has these nice golden things around her hair. Let's go ahead and put some really bright highlights on that to make it look really shiny. A little bit of gold up there. All right. Something else you can do is you can add a little bit of blush to your character's skin. Obviously, this guy isn't going to need any because he's covered in hair. But she's got regular flesh. And something that helps to give your characters a little bit of extra vibrancy is usually adding just a little bit of blush in specific areas around their skin. So create yet another layer and set this one to multiply. Then you can go in with some sort of pink or red, not too crazy bright. Maybe something like this. And then test it out, see what it looks like. Oh my gosh, that is way too red. Go ahead and drop down the opacity level until it becomes a little bit more reasonable. There we go. Now it's not quite like clown makeup. All right, that's looking pretty cute. Now, what do we do about this background? Right now, it's just a plain color, and that's fine, but we could make it just a little bit more interesting if we wanted by adding a gradient. A gradient will help give a little bit of depth and interest to whatever is going on back here. And for sky especially, I think it makes it really pop. Go ahead and create a new layer for this as well. You notice I've been creating a lot of new layers. It is really important to keep all of your effects on separate layers. Otherwise, you might end up making a mistake that will mean you have to go back and redo a whole bunch of things instead of just one thing at a time. The best way to fill one panel with a gradient is to take your magic wand up here, and you're going to want to make sure that follow adjacent pixel is checked unless you want to select everything at once. But when you want to work with just one panel, make sure that follow adjacent pixel is selected so that you only do that one particular panel. And go back down to your flats layer. And this is the whole reason that we've done our flats in the first place. And go ahead and select it there. All right, you can see we missed a couple of spots. Go ahead and hold down the shift key and pick up those extra areas if there are any. And then go back to the new layer that you just created so that you're not doing it on top of your flats. All right, so now with your active selection, go ahead and go to your gradient tool. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. Since it's blue sky, I don't want to stray too far from that. What I'm going to do is pick a very similar blue using my eyedropper key, which you can get instantly by holding down the Alt key while you have your gradient tool selected. Just go ahead and eyedropper that blue, and then Select it and maybe make it just a little bit darker. All right. Now go ahead and close this up because it's taken out some space. And drag your gradient tool down and see what it looks like. That's not too bad. It's pretty subtle. Uh, let's see what it would happen if I set that layer to multiply. Ooh, I think that pops a lot more and looks a lot more rich and interesting, don't you? Let's go ahead and deselect this and see what it looks like without the selection active. I'm pretty happy with that. You can play with it as you like before you deselect. You can change the multiply layer, you can change the opacity, you can change the color, whatever you want, go ahead and make it your own. And just like with flats and with shading, you're gonna wanna make sure and do this for every single panel until you've gotten everything on the page just the way you like it. And again, because it's time consuming, I've gone ahead and completed this page already, and I'm going to show you what I ended up with. Here it is in its fully completed form. 
Now that we've added color, your page is really starting to come to life. We've added flats, shading, maybe some effects, and we're ready to move on to word balloons.